Hey, frugal friends. So you might have known that I've been continually sick for the last like two months. And all of that has led me to think long and hard about all the ways I know of how to save more money on my medical expenses. So I thought I would share them with all of you. However, before we begin, I want to remind you that I am not a doctor. I am not your doctor. This is not medical advice. This is all just my own experiences of research. Okay? Okay. Also, you, yes, you watching are a very valuable person and you do not deserve to have every penny pinched to save money on medical costs. I offer this information so that you can save money where it doesn't matter to you so that you can spend the money to start feeling better. Okay. Got my tea with honey ready. Feel free to let me know in the comments your favorite ways to save money on medical expenses and grab a notebook because I have got some tips for you. So let's get started with number one. Let's talk about glasses. I got this one from a viewer actually and a comment from a recent video. She mentioned that you don't have to buy this whole kit and caboodle every time your prescription changes. Now I feel weird without my glasses. I feel a little naked. <sighs> better. You can just have new lenses put into your same frames. You don't need to continually buy new frames and that can save a lot of money when you have a changing prescription. Like that idea literally never occurred to me until she mentioned it in the comments. So thank you, the person whose name I forgot. It was great. Also, if you wear contacts, you can get hundreds of dollars of rebates back if you're buying certain uh, brands of contacts. And if you don't want to go through all of the paperwork and digging up all the information yourself, if you order your contacts from 1-800-CONTACTS, I found that they, they'll do all the rebate stuff for you if you just like give them a few pieces of information, which is pretty cool. And they'll just mail you the prepaid Visa debit card. And I'll leave that link for you in the description. Third, if you don't want to buy your glasses or contacts online, which some, you know, that can save you some money if you go directly onto an online uh, retailer, you can always go into your actual physical brick and mortar doc, uh, eye doctor's office and see if they price match the prices that you can find online. If you'd like the convenience of going into your eye doctor's office and buying your glasses there, see if they'll price match up. Uh, some do, and it's worth asking if that's a practice of theirs. But for my fellow four eyes out there, there is yet another expensive problem to solve when it comes to eyewear, and that's sunglasses. Prescription sunglasses are going to just double the cost of your eye expenses. You can try the little clippy on things. They never clip onto my plastic rims. My personal frugal solution that I've been using for the last couple of years is to buy the transition lenses. So I just have one pair of glasses and I have the lens on. However, there's a lot of problems with that too. And I just haven't been satisfied with any of the options available to me. But there is a new solution I recently found out about and that is Fitties Fit Over Sunglasses. They're designed to go right over my pair of glasses. They're extremely lightweight. And actually they're, they're so lightweight. When I first opened the box and I got in the mail, I just assumed it was cheap plastic crap because of how light they are. But no, it's just basically unbreakable thermoplastic and basically unbreakable hinges and basically unbreakable polarized lenses. And the durability is important because if you can keep them around through one prescription lens change, now you've saved hundreds of dollars. So thank you to Fiddies for sponsoring today's video and being my first sponsor on this channel. If you would like to buy your last pair of sunglasses ever, I negotiated a 10% off coupon for you guys and use the coupon code HOME and the link is in the description. You'll also get free shipping and free returns and no questions asked 30 day guarantee. And also this like really cool little container that's in your cup holder in your car. That's nice. <laughs> All right, let's move on to insurance rewards. People don't know this is a thing and that needs to stop. Everyone needs to know about this. Some health insurance companies will try to incentivize you to have good healthy behavior because it will keep their costs down over time, quitting smoking or exercising or routine visits with your doctor. So different plans will offer you different things like gym memberships, exercise equipments, fitness trackers, like the wearable tech stuff. For example, um, over the course of two of my pregnancies, I got $500 in cash just for talking with a nurse on the phone about how my pregnancies were going and like what kinds of healthy things I was doing to make sure I was having a good, smooth pregnancy. I think it was like $100 every time I spoke with the nurse on the phone for a half hour. So for two and a half hours of my time, I got $500 and I thought that was a pretty uh, reasonable exchange of time for money. So to find out what your plan offers, you're just going to want to search the name of your health insurance company, health rewards or wellness incentives, something like that. You should be able to find it pretty quickly. Also have to bring up HSAs and FSAs. So an HSA and an FSA or a health savings account or a flexible spending account are two different kinds of pre-tax savings. Depending on what your insurance plan is, you can put money into this before the tax gets taken out. And you can use that as a little savings account that you can use to spend on medical expenses. Sometimes your employer will help contribute to it, which is cool. And they'll give you free money that you can spend on your health 
You also don't only have to use it to pay for like a doctor's visit. You can use it to pay for Tylenol and any other medical expenses. There's cool lists online. I'll put one in the description. I list all of the different expenses that count towards one of these plans. So my husband and I literally just yesterday realized that we had access to an FSA through his work and it's going to save us $500 over the course of the next year. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when he told me because we had we have some like planned big medical expenses coming up that need to happen. Um, but because we can put this money aside pre-tax, we can save like $500 over the medical expenses that we already knew we had to pay for just because we can do it pre-tax, which is amazing. <laughs> also, if you didn't know, you can look up medical schools near me, dental schools near me, optometry schools near me, or use one of these like little trackers that I'll put in the description because when people are studying to become dentists and doctors and optometrists, they need to practice on people with supervision from, you know, like board certified, whatever people, but they need to practice on people. And so they will often do work on a sliding scale discount or completely free depending on what your financial situation is. So like when I went to school, there was a dental school and people could get their teeth cleaned by dental hygienists in training for way cheaper or free. And that kind of stuff is really helpful, especially for getting that routine, routine preventative care. All right, I have a bunch, a bunch of tips when it comes to saving money on prescription medicine. First, try buying generic medicine. You gotta talk to your doctor. You don't just do this on your own. Talk to your doctor and see if the name brand medicine and the generic brand medicine of the same kind will have the same effect on you. This also goes for over-the-counter meds. So if you've got something like name brand NyQuil or you have the generic brand Equate from Walmart or whatever, that is usually a savings of way more. Even if you had a coupon for NyQuil, it's not going to be cheaper. The, the generic brand is going to be cheaper and it's the same thing. There also can be a difference in price, even if it's just a slightly larger dose pill or if it's a slightly different kind acting pill. So some medications work on a fast acting basis and some might be an extended release. So they're like giving you slow amounts of the medicine throughout the day. Sometimes if you just take the fast acting twice a day, it has about the same effect as the extended release, but the fast acting are usually cheaper. So you can check with your doctor if a slight adjustment there might help you save some money too. Because doctors don't know how much medicines cost that they're prescribing. It, because it depends on your medical plan. And it depends on the pharmacy you go to. So they don't know. They literally couldn't have that information. So if you come to them and you say, hey, can we look at the difference between fast acting versus uh, extended release? And if you know that one is cheaper than the other at your pharmacy, you can go back to your doctor and see, hey, can we make a switch here? Is it going to give me the same benefit? You might also see a difference in price if let's say you need 20 milligrams of a medicine, but the pharmacy you go to sells the 40 milligram for way cheaper and it's the kind of pill that you can just cut in half with a pill cutter and it's the same. I had to do this when I was pregnant once. I needed to cut a pill into fourths and it had the same effect and just depending on how much you need and you can use a pill cutter and you can save some money. But please check with your doctor for all of this. Do I have to say that every single point? I might just to cover my bases. Check with your doctor. <laughs> also, this is something I literally just learned last year and it blew my mind. Different pharmacies charge different amounts of money for the same medicine. Like it sounds super obvious because grocery stores, like if I wanna get a pack of chicken at Hannaford and Aldi and Walmart and Shaw's, like those are all grocery stores near me. If I wanna get a pack of chicken at all those places, it's gonna be a different price. If I want to get a medicine at four different pharmacies, it's gonna be a different price. But I didn't know that. I just assumed it was going to be the same amount of money and I just had to pick whichever pharmacy was convenient for me. No, the pharmacies have incredibly different prices and you can do this by using apps. So I'm gonna mention two different prescription discount cards. Now you can use these to get the coupons associated, but for right now, I just wanna mention that for both of these prescription discount cards, which have associated apps, you can literally just use them to compare prices at different pharmacies. I wanna go and check up the price of the number one prescribed medication in America, which is Lipitor, which is for heart disease. I can see which of the pharmacies near me have the best prices on Lipitor or the generic version, which I am not going to be able to pronounce. <laughs> But let's go a little bit deeper because a prescription discount card has a lot of other benefits. I'm going to mention two. You can use both of them on a web browser. You can use both of them and get an app on your phone. One is called GoodRx. You might have also seen these little paper cards in your doctor's office because they've got a lot of marketing they're doing right now trying to get people to use their service. That's how I first found out about it. But you can use it like a coupon for prescriptions. And that's how I've used it in the past. And literally I've been able to save 50% just by providing a GoodRx coupon to the pharmacy tech. 
be like, oh, you said it was $200. Here's my good RX coupon. It's now $100. It was really cool. However, I learned after my first experience, which I, I had a good experience using GoodRx and I didn't sign up for their service. I just used one of those little coupon cards from my doctor's office and got a coupon. However, I learned after ex my experience that GoodRx also doesn't have the best practices when it comes to like consumer privacy. They've had a few run-ins with bad PR, selling information to Facebook, which they say they don't do anymore, so I'll respect that. But I also got a little, uh, it also left me with kind of a weird feeling, so I went out to search and see if there was anything better out there, and I found something that I'm really excited about. It's another prescription discount card. It's called Single Care. So Single Care is not making money because they're selling your data to other places. They make a marketing fee from the pharmacy when you use that pharmacy because you found out about the pharmacy through their app. They make money, a commission basically from the pharmacies. That's how they make money, not by selling your data. That made me feel a lot better. That's the one I'm going to recommend. If you want to check it out, I left a link in the description that you can use to try it out. And both GoodRx and Single Care are good if you want to continue using your in-person pharmacy and you don't want to deal with buying your pharmacy meds online, which I'll get to in a second. Again, um, let's let's look up Lipitor on GoodRx and Single Care when I'm looking at in my area. I can get it for cheaper if I use Single Care, which is pretty cool. But the final point I wanted to bring up when I'm talking about saving money on prescription medicine is the company Cost Plus Drugs. You might have heard people talking about this online. If there's a lot of chatter in a lot of the frugal communities I'm in online, people wanting other people to hear about this option. And so Cost Plus Drugs is a company that Mark Cuban, you know, the billionaire who's on Shark Tank, he founded this company because he wanted to, people to only have to pay the cost that the manufacturer has to make the product plus a 15% markup you know, so the business can do its businessy stuff but without making gross profits off of the backs of people just trying to not die. <laughs> and so if you go and you want to purchase the drugs online, that sounds like a really bad sentence. <laughs> if you want to purchase your prescription online, you can go to costplusdrugs.com and type in the medicine that you need and see what they will charge you. Whoops, there we go. So again, if we're gonna talk about medicine like Lipitor, if you go to costplusdrugs.com, it'll show you that a 30-day supply will cost you $6.20. And at a common pharmacy, that might be 60 something dollars, which is a huge difference, huge amount of savings. So it's worth checking them out. Oh, and I forgot one more site to send you to is called needymeds.org. It's kind of a catch-all site. There's an insane amount of information on the site, so much that I can't even go into all the details too. But they've got information on how to get help paying for transportation costs if you need to drive to and from doctors and can't pay for that. If you have a certain very expensive medical condition, they've got ways to apply for scholarships based on types of conditions. Find free or low cost or sliding scale clinics near you. There's just so much. It was recommended by a pharmacist herself that I was speaking to. She said that it's where she sends all of her clients. So I thought I would just uh, share that website with you as well. All right, let's talk about doctor's visits. If you have to go to the doctor because you're sick, you can check and see if any of the pharmacies near you has a, a nurse practitioner that is on site that can diagnose really simple ailments like strep throat or a sinus infection or something, and then prescribe any antibiotics if necessary. For example, like the CVS has a minute clinic and they have their non-insured cash price list online that you can just look up to find out how much it would cost you to get diagnosed with any of those things, which is pretty cool. If you have certain insurances, they also might offer you the option to have a telehealth visit with a nurse practitioner or a doctor. So you don't have to leave your house and it might be cheaper than going to the actual doctor's office and getting a diagnosis there. If it's the kind of thing that they can do verbally and just like have you talk through your symptoms. Obviously, if you need a like a P test or something, you can't do that with telehealth, but you get the point. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about if you have a cold like me. Cold medicine doesn't actually heal you. You probably knew that one already. It just eases your discomfort. So if you've got only one symptom, you do not need to take these like big marked up priced multi-symptom relief. If you've got night 12, this one has acetaminophen, doxylamine, succinate, which I don't know what that is, and dextromethorphan. That sounds like a robot. <laughs> it's got four different types of medicine in here, but if all you have is a headache and like a stuffy it's not a stuffy throat. This is a throat. <laughs> you probably only need two different kinds of medicine. You don't need to take the multi-symptom one. You can just take acetaminophen if you've got a headache or Tylenol or headache, you know, whatever you take for your headache medicine, that's a single type of medicine. Or maybe a nasal spray if you've got like some nasal congestion up in there. You don't need to take the much more expensive multi-symptom ones. If you've got four symptoms, it probably would be cheaper to get a single medicine than 
four different medicines. But again, go generic, don't get the NyQuil. Though sometimes if you, like me, have run out of all the cold medicine in your house and you send your husband to the store and everyone else in town is sick and they've all used up all the generic, sometimes you do have to buy the name brand medicine and that's just how life goes sometimes. You can't always be frugal. However, that also brings me to the next point, which is sometimes there are things you can do to ease your symptoms that aren't medicinal. So for example, you can have honey in your tea. You can use a humidifier or a steam bowl. Like you put your head over the bowl of hot water and you don't burn your nasal passages, but you can breathe in the warm, uh, steamy air that can help loosen up all the gunk in your head and have it come out. Next to last, let's talk about if you had a big medical expense and now you have a ginormous bill coming your way. First of all, don't beat yourself up. If you're recovering and you can't spend 14 hours on the phone talking to insurance after insurance after insurance agent, sometimes you need to focus on getting better and that means you have to spend more money and it's really sucky that in this country the burden is on the patient to do all of this legwork and i'm not going to get into all that right now because i don't have the emotional energy or the time in this video but um take care of yourself i know that's what i had to do when i was pregnant last and i just i couldn't fight with insurance anymore however if you have the energy or if there's a loved one who has the energy to duke it out with insurance here's a few things you can try number one obviously you can ask for a charity application or hardship assistance or financial aid or whatever the hospital you went to calls it you can ask them for assistance and they usually have some form of assistance they can offer income limits can be pretty high like compared to the income limits to get like government assistance, the income limits for getting assistance at a hospital are usually much higher. So you should check that out first. Next, if you have cash on hand and you can pay in cash so that the hospital doesn't have to run your credit card and get charged by the company to like pay the percentage for the credit card, sometimes they'll offer a cash discount. So you can ask for that. You can also see if they have payment in full discounts because sometimes they would rather have the lump sum given to them right away than have to bother you over and over over the course of months or send you to collections to try to get some of your money back. You might just be able to say, do you have a payment in full discount? They might be able to slip you even five or 10% can make a big difference when you're talking about big medical bills. Also, if you're grumpy about how expensive it was and you think that something might be off, you can ask for a itemized bill, which is where they're going to list out every pill you took every procedure that they did to you, every doctor you saw, they're gonna list it all out and all the associated costs. There was a study done that showed up to 80% of medical bills have errors in them in, when they're talking through with insurance. So it's worth getting the itemized bill and seeing if there's anything in there that really shouldn't be. I also found a great guide online that will walk you through what to do if you do find an error. And I'm not gonna get into talking about all that now because I'm not an expert. I'm just going to link that to you below if you want to go over there and check them out. Finally, all the preventative stuff that's boring and I'm gonna list right here, it does help. It will reduce your medical needs. It's not fancy or sexy, but all that jazz, you know it's cheaper than visiting a doctor or buying medicine. <laughs> maybe you're not sick today, maybe you're not spending very much regularly on medical costs. You might wanna save this video to your favorite so the next time you're sick or you have a big bill, you can reference it. Half the reason I'm making this video is so I'll have a reference point the next time I have a bill. I'm gonna rewatch my own video. And or if you know someone who's got a lot of medical expenses right now, you can send this video to them and see if I can't help them lower their doctor bills too. I'm gonna go rest on the couch some more, so bye YouTube.